Melanie Deal, I want to talk to you about email marketing, the importance, some takeaway tips, you offer training on it. What do small businesses need to know in 2021 about email marketing? The very first thing that small businesses need to know about email marketing is it is not dead. Email marketing is the king of ROI. Um, email marketing has a 42x ROI. So for every $1 spent on email marketing, on average, you're going to turn it into 42. I don't know a better place that has a greater ROI than email marketing. A couple of things that I want small business owners to realize is, and, and all business owners really, mm -hmm. um, you know, the social media platforms can change from time to time. And well, they do. Uh, they change what seems like daily. And sometimes it seems like they change more often than daily. Um, email marketing is always going to be there for you, no matter what service provider you're using. And you own your email list and you can control the content. You can control the frequency. You have so much control over your messaging. So it really is a super powerful tool for small business owners. And the other thing is, if you want to sell the business and working with business brokers, that's part of an asset of the business. It and absolutely is an asset of the business. I totally agree with that. And I remind business owners of that on a regular basis. We need to always be growing our email subscriber list. It's an asset. Many people say I get too many emails already uh, and that sometimes gets businesses to be a little more reluctant in doing it so talk about what is some of the few of the things they can do to be a priority for their customers to read the email and the newsletters and and uh, anything related to that right so there are a few things that we need to keep in mind that's going to actually improve our efforts when we're email marketing and that's keeping the customer experience in mind when we can and we have the ability to do this we have the ability to personalize these emails and when we do that we will see a greater return on our efforts so personalize those emails segment your lists make sure that you're sending your your your, your subscribers targeted information that they are specifically interested in when you start your email marketing, take a look at your analytics and take a look at what's going on behind the scenes because that will tell you what's working and what's not working. If people have joined up to, re to, your, to your list to receive information from you, it's because they want to receive information from you. So don't be afraid to email them. And I say, at the very minimum, you want to email them once a month, but probably twice a month. We know that inboxes are a very busy place. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of noise in the inbox. So we have to be a little creative as far as getting our emails open and read and then an action taken. So that's something we need to keep in mind as well. So when you talk about action, what does that look like in the email you're sending out? Perfect. So calls to action can vary dependent upon the business or what the message is that you have for that particular subscriber. So let's say you are a, a local brick and mortar business and you provide personal care services. Maybe you are a spa or a barbershop or a hairdresser or an esthetician. What do you want people to do? Do you want them to schedule an appointment? Do you want them to buy some product? Maybe you want them to leave you a review on Google or Facebook. So whatever that action is, is that you want them to do, make it very clear and easy for them to take that action, embed that link that goes direct, directly to your Google My Business profile, or embed that link that goes direct, direct to your scheduling tool so they can schedule an appointment. Understanding what your audience needs helps you make that decision easier for them and the action easier for them to take. Any advice on how to find out more what your customer needs in sculpting and creating your newsletter and emails? So that tends to be the million dollar question, right? What are people interested in? Uh, the first thing that we can do is just ask them. Um, we know that if they're existing customers or clients of ours, we have a good idea of what their interests are. So we can go ahead and put them in that, that pot of that particular interest or that bucket, if you will. So we know what they're interested in. Maybe we have new people that have joined. How did they get to our email list? Did they subscribe from a lead magnet that we had put out there? Were they interested in some sort of information and event that we went to. Sometimes we can just tell by that action alone by how they subscribe to our list. Other times we need to maybe send out a survey and say, what is it specifically that you're interested to rank it? We have a really good return rate or response rate 
on um, surveys and polls that maybe have just one or two questions. And it, so don't ask them a bunch of questions. People are busy. They're not going to take the time to answer 10 questions on a poll or survey that you send out. So it's really easy to just do that through a Google form or something like that and, and ask your audience what they want to know about. That sounds excellent. Titles. What is your recommendation of do's and don'ts on subject lines and you know for the emails? Right. Um, subject lines, if you can make them personal. Um, one of the easiest ways to increase your open rate is, well, let's talk about content too, because they're, they're relevant, right? So the content, we know if you can include a video in your email campaign, then you have, and you put the word video in your subject line, you could increase your open rate by 18%. You can increase your click-through rate by 60%. People are really interested in consuming video. We know video is the strongest type of content that we can create today. So make sure that your subject line meets the content that's in the video in the in the email itself, mm -hmm. whether it's video or something else. If you can be clever and stand out, I like to use puns if applicable. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to be, you know, it needs to be well done, right? And, and respectful. Um, if you can use numbers, um, we like to avoid spammy type things. Um, but sometimes you can in include some sort of FOMO, a fear of missing out, um, scarcity, but I wouldn't overdo it on that. Um, really just be honest about what's inside and make it about your audience because what's in it for me is what it's really about. So think about when you scan your own inbox, the first thing you do is you look at who is it from and then the next thing you do is what's it about and is it critical for me to read this now? Because some things that we know about human behavior is, am I going to do it now or later? And we want them to do it now because when is later? Later. Later. And often later is never, right? Mm -hmm. So we want people to, to take that action and open that email now. So we've got to be very clever. So I like to do some A-B split testing. I like you to scroll, scroll through your own inbox and see what kind of subject lines pop out at you and use those for inspiration for future campaigns. What is your advice for people starting out? The, the absolute beginning level in getting involved in this. When you're just getting started with email right. marketing. You don't have any names. You don't have any contacts. You're just beginning. And you have, okay. you know, you you don't have an existing list. Where, where, where do they begin? Okay. The first thing you need to do is get a reputable email service provider. This is not sent through your Gmail or Outlook or Yahoo. You get yourself a reputable email service provider, and then you set up a welcome email so that when people do subscribe to your list, they automatically get an email from you right away. Mm -hmm. That's the very first thing because they've said yes, they've opted in. We want to hit them right away. So you don't have to think about, and then what I like to do is actually create a couple campaigns that are automated. So they might just be evergreen type content that just says, yeah, here, a welcome series, if you will. Hey, here's a little bit more about us. Here's where you can find us on social. Tell us what your interests are. If you have those things established up front before you start collecting email addresses, then you don't have to worry about your email subscribers getting information from you because you don't have to go around and start generating it and creating it from scratch. It's already there for you. So it's automated on the back end, and then you can start sending out your nurturing email campaigns later. So that's what you want to do before you get started. Then I want you to start collecting email addresses, and that's another whole, I have a whole class that I teach 30 mm -hmm. ways to grow your email list, Ooh. but there's lots of ways that we can do that. And uh, social media marketing is a great way to grow your email email list as well, because if they're following on social, they want more information from you. And we know they're not getting everything on social. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see people make in the field? Like, I can't believe they did it. Yes. I can't believe they didn't use an email service provider, first of all. Right. <laughs> Right. Um, we have all received those and everybody's email addresses are exposed and that sets a bad tone, a bad taste in the mouth for the recipients. Also, there's no way to unsubscribe. So we want to make sure that we are above board and really marketing as a professional business owner and a prof you know, even if marketing isn't our, our primary task that we do, we're still marketing our business and we want to be professional when we go about it. Um, adding people to your email list when they never subscribed is not a good idea either. Yeah. Um, and sending them information that is completely irrelevant to, to what their interests are. Those are some of the big things that mm -hmm. we see. Um, and also there's, there's this whole credibility part that falls into place as well. So we've got to make sure that our email subject lines are really relevant to the content that's in the email campaign, that sort of thing. 
making sure that, oh, here's one of my biggest mistakes that I've seen, Martin. Small business owners collecting email addresses at their place of business, and then they never email their list. Mm -hmm. That happened to me personally. I signed up at the as this place, local business. Uh, yeah. I was in the place two months later. Uh, I never got an email from them. I signed up again. I never got an email from them until about two years later. The only email they ever sent out was their business was closing. And I thought you were sitting on a gold mine of, of, of potential clients and customers who wanted your information. So if you're going to collect email addresses, email your people. They want to hear from you. Is there anything that can be too often in email? Yes. Yes. So that, that gets to be a very, a very fine line. What's right. not enough and what's too often. Right. So understanding your audience, understanding what's, what did you promise them up front? So set those expectations right up front when they join, here's how often you can expect to hear from us. That's something that you can include in your, in your welcome series. We're going to send you information once a week or once a month or whatever that looks like. Now there are certain organizations that can email you multiple times a day. Like, some of the big arts and crafts stores or the big department stores, some of the major chains, they might email you two or three times a day. Most small business owners are not going to get away with that. Um, I know that some restaurants, the small restaurants, if they have daily specials, they can get away with emailing those out every day because people are expecting the daily specials. If I were to email you email marketing and social media marketing tips once a day, you would probably unsubscribe very quickly mm -hmm. because that's just mm -hmm. not relevant to you. So it comes to me knowing my audience mm -hmm. and setting those expectations up front. Excellent. This, these were really valuable tips for small businesses. And what are ways people can learn more about you and hire you for helping with this? You can visit my website, melaniedeal.com. Excellent. Fantastic. Thanks, Melanie. This is great. Really useful tips for small business. And remember, you control your website and your email, just as you said, while you are a product on the other platforms. Thanks. Thank you.